right now. Today is the day that you choose to change the rest of your life. It is time to turn your setback into the greatest comeback story ever told. And nobody is more capable than you. This is the Ranting Weight Watcher Podcast, the future number one weight loss podcast in the world. I am your host, Donato Russo. I hope you enjoy the show today. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the show, please subscribe and spread the word of the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast wherever you are and to whomever will listen. If you'd like to connect on social media or wherever else, check out my Linktree page, Linktree forward slash the Ranting Weight Watcher. Let's connect today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 171 of the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you to the show. If you enjoy it, I'd ask if you could please consider subscribing. And if the app you are using allows you to rate the show or leave feedback or both, if you would consider leaving a four-star or five-star rating, and leaving feedback about that show, what happens is when you do this, when somebody who uses the same app as you looks for a weight loss related podcast, the ranting weight watcher just comes up a little bit higher on that list. The more of you that do that. So something unexpected happened in the Facebook groups this week. I had a suggestion from a member of the groups named Joan who suggested that I make a post where everyone can contribute titles of what they are reading so that everything is kind of like in one place. I thought this was a good idea because I'm always telling you guys in certain times where the scale is not moving, where life is a little weird in your journey, sometimes the best thing you could do is open a book and educate yourself about nutrition in a way that you don't already know. So I made the post. And I even recommended three of the books that I had recently read. It has since taken on a life of its own. It is so cool. If you're listening to the show and you are not a part of the consistency group. Now, this group started off as a challenge, a challenge to achieve consistency. But it is becoming so much more than that. It is a group of individuals all after the same thing, achieving consistency. But the support for each other and now the informational part of it all, when this, this resource that is going to be a list of books about nutrition that other members of the group have read, it is going to be some place to go for help. I, I just never foresaw that when I started that group. I saw it as a way to get you guys to understand how to try to come up with a way to build consistency in your life. Man, it is taking on a wonderful life of its own. I am uh, proud to say that I, I made it and how many people are contributing to it. If you are interested and you want to join that consistency group, it's called RWW Consistency Challenge. For now, at least. I, I was considering changing the name because it's no longer really a challenge anymore. Now it's just a way of life. Consistency is a way of life. Right now, if you want to join that Facebook group and be part of the people who are supporting each other and to achieve consistency in their lives, go to the group section of the Facebook app and just search RWW Consistency Challenge. Click on Join. And I'll let you in. Now, let's not waste any time. Let's get into this. Journey updates. I am up this week. Three pound gain. Total loss is 172 pounds since January 12th, 2019. You know... When I think back, of all since the beginning, 
there are so many ways that the scale has affected me. And in so many ways, I have grown past the result moment. When I first started, the result that came from that little device, it would make or break the weekend that would follow. So I'd go into the studio on Saturday morning and I would get weighed and the result itself would dictate my attitude for the rest of the weekend, essentially. And it would take sometimes days to get over depending on what was happening, right? I would ruin weekends, whole weekends, because of me being so moved by a scale result when really it was just nonsensical thinking. But I guess that's it's kind of part of everything that we all have to kind of come to grips with. The realization that it's not about the result, it's about changing your behavior, it takes a long time. It's not something that comes on. Even if someone like me is telling you that's what it's about, it doesn't matter that I say it. You have to realize it. And I could say it every episode for the rest of the time you're ever listening. You're going to get it in your time. I can't make you get it. As time progressed, I started to find success. In the beginning, the success came just by changing the food. I wasn't exercising in the beginning of all of this. It wasn't until I achieved the 50-pound charm that I realized I needed to do something different here. I needed to introduce exercise into my life because there was no way I was going to get to 100 pounds lost just by changing the food. So I began what has become the building blocks of building consistency. It took many, many, many weeks to build it because every time I did it, I said, this is in place for eight weeks. So every time I made a change, it was an eight-week change. The first change was to do walking 20 minutes a day for three days a week for eight weeks. And then it went and it built so on from there. Every time there was a slight change from 20 minutes to 30 minutes, from three days to four days. And now it's upwards of, you know, nine nine to 10 miles on my biggest days. There is no more length goals here. It's just, this is what I do on these days kind of a thing. When I started to build this consistency, a big realization kind of hit me that the scale would still fluctuate even though I created this whole regimen. And that's kind of when the power of the scale started to break over my life. So it wasn't that it ruined me anymore. It was that, you know, it was just this annoyance. The one behavior that stuck with me was every time the scale wouldn't go in my way, I would endlessly analyze why. Why could this be? Just saying it was a weight fluctuation wasn't good enough for me. So instead of being angry and pissed off, I was focused in analyzing my situation every week. Every time the scale did not go in the direction I liked, it was like analysis mode kicked in and I would start making blind changes literally for no reason. These changes led to even more crazy results. And I had to almost discipline myself to stop making changes. Because what if a change wasn't needed? What if staying the same was needed more than anything else? Especially if I did everything as I planned to do it. Maybe sometimes whatever you're doing just needs time. Time is the separating factor. So I came up with a rule that I wasn't allowed to make a change in my journey unless the scale went up for three weeks in a row. And this taught me a level of discipline. 
I mean, I mean, come on. How many of you stare at the scale and, and watch it go up and immediately you freak out and you want to change something, right? This is the way my mind worked in the beginning. And then I had to discipline myself that not every fluctuation is a direct result of the work you're doing. It also broke my idea that the result of my work would show up on the seventh day. Because there were many weeks, I'm sure you guys have had them, where I didn't make the greatest choices. Nobody in their right mind would ever replicate the week, but I had a loss anyway. So I had to realize in those moments that my work wasn't being registered on the seventh day. It was just taking its time to show up. All of these contributed to the design of the waiting for three gains in a row in order to make a change. The only reason I could stare at a scale going up three weeks in a row is because I knew the work I was doing was consistent. If the work I was doing was not consistent, there was no way I could stare at the scale going up three gains in a row and make no changes. I would have zero confidence in the work I was doing. So creating consistency gave me confidence in what I did. This was another way the chain of the scale broke over my life. I noticed something, though. Everything up to the 50-pound charm was relatively easy. I walked into Weight Watchers 400 pounds, basically. I had a lot of weight to lose, and the simple substitutions of food that I made was enough to lose 50 pounds. I literally don't feel like the first 50 pounds was hard to lose at all because all I did was substitute what I was eating for point-friendly food that I liked. Essentially, went through life from the first pound to the 50th pound relatively easily. But when I was going from the 50th pound to the 75th pound, things got a whole lot harder. So I started in 2019. I got the 50-pound charm in August. And I was on my way to 75, and I believe February of the next year was when I finally hit it. It was definitely work for the first time since I had begun. It felt like a work, at least I should say. Because it wasn't so easy. It wasn't just about continually eating what I was eating, something else had to be introduced. I hit 75, and I start to pursue the 100-pound charm. And a lot more of the same happened. I noticed something, though, when I hit the 100-pound charm. Because I was doing st something kind of stupid in reality. I would get so close to the milestone goal that I would start to give things up for the sake of achieving the milestone. So I'd give up a bunch of food with no intention to give it up forever. I would drop the weight, get the milestone, and then go right back to eating what I was eating. The problem that happened here is when I went back to eating what I was eating, the weight that I had at the point when I started before I made the choice to drop it all, came right back. To give you numbers to make you understand, let's say I was at 95 pounds down and I wanted that extra five to hit the 100-pound mark. I'd give up a bunch of food, hit the 100-pound mark, and then all of the food that I gave up in order to get the 100-pound, I would just bring it right back. And that what would happen? I'd go right back to 95. I didn't really realize it then, but something weird would happen. When I would gain that weight back, it was like there was this weird sensation where I felt like a failure. But it only specifically 
would happen to me because I had watched Gaines many times, right? It only specifically happened when it was involving a milestone number. I didn't really notice it then, though. So 125 comes, I do the exact same thing. I drop a bunch of food in order to achieve the milestone. I introduce the food after I achieve the milestone, and the weight comes right back. And then slowly over time, probably when I should have hit the 125 milestone, that's basically when I get back to it and go from there. The 150-pound milestone was the same thing. Gave it up to take it back and to gain the weight. Each time coincided with this feeling of failure. We're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. I now present to you the Ranting Weight Watcher Accountability Creed. If you choose this day to say this creed, you are accountable to me, the author. You are also accountable to all of those before you who have taken the creed and all of those after you who will take the creed. But most of all, you are accountable to yourself. Now recite with me the accountability creed. Nothing can stand in my way because I choose to be unstoppable. My challenges crumble in my presence because I choose strength when I am weak. My insecurities have no power over my life because I choose confidence in the face of fear. I own every last one of my mistakes because I choose growth over mediocrity. The mirror and the scale are powerless because I move forward in spite of the result. Circumstances are not obstacles because I see solutions instead of problems. The demons of my past can no longer torment me because I choose to renew my mind daily. All things are possible as long as I believe because if God is for me, who can be against me? This is the creed I declare each day. It is about what I do, not what I say. I will learn the work that needs to be done. I will never stop, even when I've won. I will work consistently, no matter the cost. I refuse to believe that all hope is lost. I will work when I want to. I will work when I don't. I will work when they are cheering. I will work when they won't. I will work when it's easy. I will work when it's hard. The atonements that I've made are made with no regard. I will work when it's cold. I will work when it's hot. Because choices have consequences, justified or not. When I think I know it all, I will start back at one. Because regardless of what I think, the work is never done. And from this moment forward, when times are tough, I choose to believe that I am enough. And we are back. Thanks for sticking with me. A long time ago, I'm not even sure when, I, I want to say it was season two or season three, I did an episode that I titled The Voices of Failure. And I believe the context of that episode was a little bit different than what I'm talking about today, but they are involved in this scenario, just to make you understand. So to go from 150, I had told you this story a couple of times here. 
I also had decided there was no way I was going to give up anything to achieve the 175. I was not going to give it up because I didn't want to introduce it again just to have the weight come back. I go through the process. You guys already know how much time it took. I finally achieve the milestone last weigh in. It was that day that the voices started. Because it came with a huge loss. And I've, I've said this before in other episodes. When things are done as consistently as I do them, it's weird to me to see either a big gain or a big loss. Most people would say, oh, it's a loss. You know, be happy. But because of how systematic and how consistent everything is in my life, to see a huge weight fluctuation either direction simply does not make sense. So last week when I stepped on that scale, lost four pounds, 4.2 or whatever it was, and achieved exactly the milestone, enough to make the milestone, 175. I didn't trust the scale because it was a big loss. And so many times in the history when I've had a big loss, so there's kind of three things that happen. The next way in, I either have a tiny loss, like just ounces, or I stay the same, or I gain. Now, the majority of the time, it's a gain. But all three have happened, but the majority of the time, it's a gain. Historically, since I began this journey, I have a huge loss and it's followed by some sort of gain. Not necessarily the entire amount, just some sort of gain. And so here we are a week later and I'm telling you there's a three pound gain. And this three pound gain comes with the basically removing the milestone of 175. I'm back to 172 pounds lost. And so the voices begin. I think that what I've officially found here is the last hold the scale has on me. I have stared three pound gains literally. I mean, I look at them and it's no big deal. But because this one's caused me to lose the 175 pound milestone, this one is causing me to feel like a failure. And the, it's all mental, right? In reality, if, if I gain three pounds and I've stared at three pounds before and said, okay, move on to the next week and, and never really have been phased by it, then it should be the same. It shouldn't matter what the total was afterwards. But it does in this case. Now, I didn't go crazy here. I didn't, you know, fall off the rails because of this. I knew the only way to handle this situation was to keep going. Because no matter what, how many times have I told you guys, whether you gain, whether you lose, or whether you still stay the same, whether you're in weight loss mode or whether you're in maintenance, when you step off that scale, we all have something to do. We all have work to do. And it doesn't really matter what the result was because that's not going to change whether or not you have work to do today. So... This is kind of what I held on to in this moment. What work do I have to do today to keep it going? Because that was most important, getting focused on what needed to be done today. I can't tell you how to defeat this voice. If you ever hear the voice that tells you you're a failure because of a gain, 
if you ever hear the voice that tells you you're a failure because you were you lost a milestone with a gain. I can't tell you how to defeat this voice. But I can tell you what I did in the moment was get back to work. It was, okay, what haven't I done today? What needs to be done? And when am I going to do it? Right? And what have I told you that are the main things that you need to make sure are done every day? Tracking, weighing and measuring, moving. Right? So that's what I fell back on. Does it mean that the aggravation of the situation goes away? No. It doesn't mean that. But your work is required to be done whether or not you're aggravated. Does it mean that if the, it, if the situation was an emotional situation and I was sad, does it mean that sad excuses me from doing the work? No, it doesn't. Because whether or not I'm sad... I have to get work done. There's something about achieving a milestone and having the world celebrate with you. Having everybody congratulate you. Then to seven days later have to tell them there's a gain. I used to have problems creating a podcast episode on weeks that I had gained. I had defeated any kind of issue with gaining. And then I introduced the podcast. I used the podcast to be accountable. So I purposely announce a gain or a loss at the beginning of every episode because this podcast was created to keep me accountable. That was the number one reason of the podcast. What it has grown into is another thing entirely. But what it began as was a way for me to keep myself accountable. As I would report a gain, the voices would visit me then too, telling me I wasn't worthy to put a podcast out. How dare I tell other people how to lose weight if I just gained? In this moment, the voices don't care what you've accomplished. They only care about the current situation. Because they know the current situation bothers you. Now, will the voices ever go away? I don't know. I can't tell you that. All I know is whether the voices are there or not, whether they're quiet or loud, I have work to do. Whether the world is cheering because you achieved a milestone or the world is happy that, oh, he's, he's human. He gains too. It's nice to see that he struggles once in a while. It's sad to say it, but I believe we all have people in our lives that think that way. They may not say it to our face, but they think that way. So something hit me as I was sitting in a workshop. I was listening to someone talk and they had obviously had seen one of my walk videos and they were commenting that they were feeling the same way having just achieved a milestone themselves. And that's when it hit me. Like all at once it hit me as I was listening to her, the core of all of this, it hit me. I realized that, you know, like, okay, so in the beginning of the journey, we have some great success. And if you have some good people in, that stand next to you and are supporting you in this, in the beginning, they'll say things to you like, okay, look, it won't always be like this. You got to know that there are going to days that are going to come that the scale doesn't go your way. That you're going to do everything right and it won't move at all. Or you're going to do everything right and it'll go in the wrong direction. It won't always be this good. We take that and we hear them, but we don't really listen because we're caught up in the moment. We're caught up in the success. You don't want to think about that possibility in those moments. 
And time goes by. And just like they say, things start going against your way. Right? You're doing the work and you're not getting the results anymore. But in those moments, you're going to forget that they said that to you in the beginning. You're never going to think about it. It's going to be totally slipped from your mind. But as we go through it all, you know, you'll hear a lot of people say, the scale number doesn't define me. That's what they say. The funny thing is here is that usually whenever I heard it going through the five years that I hear I'm here on plan, it's in regards to a gain. But somehow, some way in all of this, the scale went from defining, my, defining me and having trouble when I didn't like the result then I got more mature and my work started to define me and the consistency of my work started to define me above all else. I stared at gain after gain after gain so many times in the past five years. And somehow I didn't see this. I didn't see this and I have had multiple instances where this has happened now and I didn't realize it until this moment that I'm yesterday in a workshop listening to this woman speak. Somewhere along the line, I became the guy that other people looked at and said, look, that's the guy that lost 75 pounds. Look, that's the guy that lost 100 pounds, 125 pounds, 150 pounds. And now... 175 pounds. I went from gains cannot define me to milestones defining me. And I can't for the life of me think how that happened. But I became the guy that achieved the milestone. And this is the core of why achieving the milestone and then having a gain causes this feeling of failure as opposed to having, I mean, I can't count how many times I've had a three pound gain in the five years I'm on plan. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever that this three pound gain is different than literally any other three pound gain I've ever had in five years. And yet it is because I lost a milestone that defined me. So what do I do here? See, just the same as those moments where the scale didn't define me because of a gain, I had to grow in maturity. And somehow, achieving the milestone and receiving that charm became the next thing I had to grow in maturity for. Because every time they handed me that charm, I became the guy that did this. So in the process of all of that, in the process of becoming mature, the scale do stopped defining me when I did consistent work. My consistent work ethic day after day is what defined me so the milestones have to be defeated in the same way if I am to say that the milestones don't define me just the same way as the gains did not my same work ethic has to be what it is that makes me grow from the fact that I'm the guy that achieved X milestone. The good news is it's possible because I've already done it. This is just a different way of looking at the same problem from a different angle. But the answer is the same. So what changes? 
absolutely nothing. Nothing changes whatsoever. Every day, I will get up and I will do the work necessary. I will check the boxes that need to be done on a daily basis, whether someone's watching me or nobody's watching me, whether I feel like doing it or whether I don't feel like doing it, whether I have every excuse on the planet not to do it or whether I have no excuses not to do it. I will do it regardless, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Because that's the key to it all. So many times I've told you about finding balance. And I just found another way that yet I need to find balance in. Because I won't allow the milestone goals to define who I am. I am much bigger than the guy that lost 175 pounds. I am so much more and I have so much more coming for my life than these stupid milestones. So it's time to get back to work. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all.